6,000 milliamp or 10,000 milliamp, depending on, you know, how much money you want to spend. These batteries here that I have here on this guy and on this one here, um, this is a, is a 3,300 milliamp battery. Um, costs roughly about $100 a battery. So your battery pack is... Would that give you an hour's worth? No. That'll give you about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Your typical They're, cell phone batteries are 2100 to 2400 milliamps, so yeah. it's a little bit bigger than a cell phone battery. Yeah. So, it, you know, when you think 15 minutes, that's not a long time. You fly one of these for 15 minutes and control it, you'll find that at the end of 15 minutes, you're glad to come back down to, down to Earth. And <laughs> Uh, these will go. In your hand. This one here. Well, both of them will will have a range of uh, about oh three thousand feet. It's limited to your controller. Yeah, it's limited to the controller and your radio, your radio so your radio receiver. Uh, there are long range radio receivers that you can you can get that will extend the range. You can go out of line of sight. Um, they'll go miles. They've tested them. But um, you're really not allowed to fly out without line of sight. So that's one of the requirements that even for amateurs, non-commercial use, you still have to keep the visual on, on the uh, on the plane itself. When I look at it there from this spot, it looks like it's, there's open stuff. Does the weather bother at all? It's, it's going to get a cap put on it, oh, okay. but everything's open anyway, so you're really not flying them in, in heavy-duty bad weather. Um, the nice thing about this is I can get live view, so with this here, I have a GoPro camera mounted on a gimbal, and it's hooked up to my res my uh, receiver. It will then transmit the video image to a monitor. So as I'm flying, I can look at my monitor and I can see what the what the camera sees in live view. I also have telemetry, which will tell me uh, what the height I'm at, how much battery capacity I have left. Um, it gives me the direction I'm flying in, where home base is. Um, that's pretty well. There are units where you can use goggles and you're fully encased and that all you see is what the plane sees. And the experience they say is like phenomenal, like it's like Unbelievable, the sensation you get. I've never tried it, but maybe one day. Is your controller dedicated to one machine? Or yes. Um, there's different controllers. Um, DGI, the company that makes this one here, they use a controller which is a proprietary in nature. Uh, it's called a NASA system. Um, it's not open source, so whatever the company decides to put into it is what you get. Uh, and there are other companies called, uh, from the NASA, you can get the Wukong system, which will give you more capabilities uh, to fly missions. This one here, the APM, is by 3D Robotics, a company out of the state that was founded by a fellow named Chris Anderson, who used to be the <coughs> editor of Wired Magazine several years ago. He left Wired Magazine and started a, a company called 3D Robotics. Um, he also started a group, uh, DI, DIY.drone.com, and that's where the drone phenomenon started really was when he started that site about 10 years ago. 
right now they have roughly, I think, about 60,000 people registered on that site. So you can see you know, the, how it's a, it's a large component of people. Um, I've got a few pictures that I can show you. Roger, they have competitions with uh, in the clubs? They are now starting, and you see more and more of it, uh, uh, racing quads. And there's, uh, and within the next five years, you're going to have a full racing circuit. Um, but it's brand new. This is, this slide here is a, a slide of uh, High Hope Farms, their golf course up on Lake Ridge. That was, uh, I did some work for them. I did some aerial photographs for them. And that's the approach to the second green. Um, I'm flying roughly about 75 feet in the air. So is that where the payback is to do stuff like that? Yeah. Air photography? That's my ultimate goal is to, there's several things you can do, like several applications. One is, is commercial applications such as working for real estate companies taking aerial photos of listings. Uh, secondly, you can work like with golf courses for advertising purposes. Um, you can do uh, turf management programs with them where you fly their, their, over their greens and you can take pictures and get some idea how healthy the, the greens are. Uh, they have the agricultural component, which is a big component, and that's where most of the money is going to be uh, spent on is in the agricultural sector, helping farmers. Farmers are now utilizing drones uh, for crop management and precise agricultural purposes. Yes? You had control over the cameras, so we don't have any shots. You were doing a golf course. This was actually done with a video, and then I took from the video, I did still shots from the video. But the GoPro will take individual shots and you can preset it to take a picture every half second up to 10 seconds. So um, I usually set mine at about every five seconds it takes a picture. And because of the card that I have in there, I can take up to about 4,000 pictures on a, on a card. So there's plenty of space to you're only up there for 10, 15 minutes, so you, in that space of time, you'll probably take 300 pictures. It's amazing. I thought I'd seen on television some time back where they were investigating the use of drones for delivery of small package things. Well, it's... <laughs> at first, a couple of years ago, uh, Amazon <coughs> came out with the idea they're going to deliver packages, and everybody in the, in the industry says, nah, it's a publicity stunt, they're just trying to get their name out. Now it turns out that the FAA in the States have, have allowed Amazon to do research on using drones to deliver packages. <laughs> so somewhere along the line, they are serious about doing it exactly what how they're going to do it or what they're going to do with it nobody really knows but uh, this is the they're going towards that they, they wouldn't invest that kind of money unless they thought they could do something with it google is also uh, getting involved and they're talking about even producing their own drones um, so it's it's wide open just a comment on top of that. <clears throat> Google, you know, is everybody familiar with Google Earth? Yeah. Okay. Google is also de are developing drones so that you can actually get a 360 degree view of uh, a specific object. Like if you were looking at the Empire State Building, you know, or something like that, you can't really see it other than a still picture. Or the camp. They can actually take it now with the drone and just go right around it. Mm -hmm. So you can always, you can just rotate the image mm -hmm. all the way around so you can see all the way around it. Well, that's one of the aspects that, that I didn't touch on is that um, that there are mapping programs now available um, to do just that. 
and that's one of the areas where it's becoming, uh, you know, uh, quite um, useful is that for, uh, say, a mining company, they want to map a certain area. Actually, if anybody watched uh, the Gold Rush Alaska series, a uh, couple of about a month ago, they had an episode where they were actually using a drone to take um, pictures of a creek bed, and uh, they mapped the bed. Post, the, they processed it through a program, and came up with a detailed rendering of the creek bed. And so it's starting to be used in that aspect uh, with uh, the the mapping programs available now. You can do 3D renderings uh, of almost anything. Um, it's just phenomenal what they what they're doing. This one here it would probably carry between 10 and 15 pounds. So it's. I should have mentioned this before. There, there are various sizes. Like, this is a quadcopter, mainly because it's got four engines on it, four propellers. Okay. This one here is called a hexacopter. It has six. You can go up to eight, an octocopter, uh, which is even bigger than this one. It is used in the film industry now. The octocopters that. For, for doing film work. You'd be amazed at the number of commercials that are shot today are using drones or UAVs to do the aerial photography. Any car commercial that you see now where the cars are racing through mountains and that is most likely done with, with one of these. There's a company in town, Caspi Industries, who's one of the ones in Canada that is, you know, he started doing filming for the film industry and does most of the filming of, of in, in that as, in that sector. Yes? They've got your right wing and all, like, they use my carrots or something like that. You can... See, a lot of people get kind of paranoid. <laughs> I mean, you can use anything if you're a terrorist. Uh, well, not really, no. But it, it's, you know, people say, well, what's stopping a terrorist from strapping a bomb on there and flying it over the, you know, parliament buildings? Well, go ahead and do it because that would probably be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that going. Edit that part. <laughs> but in reality, the, there's so much security goes on and everything that you know the likelihood of somebody adapting one of these. There are most likely better ways of doing it and more efficient ways of doing it than what you would with a, a drone. The other aspect is a privacy issue that people are all up. If you're from the, in the States, from southern states, oh my God, they're going to take a picture of my wife sunbathing. Well, who cares? I mean, I can go to any bookstore and I get a magazine and see all the wives I want. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is common for any new, you know, any new uh, adventure or any new uh, technology that comes on. When they came out with the, the cameras in the early or late 1800s, early, they had the same thing. They had protests on beaches. You know, that, oh, somebody has a portable, they can set up a camera on a beach.